What's up, folks? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to show you the capabilities of Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental. It's a recent release by Google that offers this multimodal live option with Gemini. And in the playground in AIstudio.google.com, which is where I am right now, you can interact with it. And we're going to do that. And we're going to try out the three main features of it. So the talk to Gemini option, the show Gemini option, and the share your screen option. So there you see the kind of stuff you can do. So when I click here on talk to Gemini, this is where I get, Hey, how's it going? I'm doing a video about how to use AI for doing certain tasks on your computer. What kind of tangible tasks do you think are really nice to automate using uh, LLMs and AI in general? That's an interesting topic. I think that automating tasks such as writing emails, summarizing long documents and transcribing audio files are all very useful applications of LLMs. Okay, sorry, sorry. This is really interesting, but what I really care about is like workflows that involve, you know, integrating different providers and, you know, doing something a little bit more complex than just, you know, summarizing emails and things like that. What do you think are like interesting options? I understand. So you are looking for more complex automations. I think that using AI to manage your calendar and scheduling meetings or to create and manage social media posts across different platforms could be interesting options. Do these ideas resonate with you? Yeah, these ideas are great. Thank you very much. All right, folks. So as you can see, I'm going to refresh this page so we can see the options again. But as you can see, the talk to Gemini option is super fast. You can interrupt and just like in the um, uh, real time API by OpenAI, you can talk over it and it's uh, you know, quite powerful, quite interesting, right? And the second option that I think is quite interesting is if we click on show Gemini and then use our webcam to talk about different things in our uh, put in front of the put in front of the model and see if the model knows about it. So I'm going to try that with different objects here and we'll see what happens. All right. Uh, so I'm going to click on show Gemini. Hey, can you tell me what you can see? see you are in a room with white walls and some framed prints hanging behind you. I also see you are wearing a baseball cap and glasses. Is there anything else you'd like me to describe? Yeah. What am I holding in front of you? You are holding a round white object with the word loop printed on it. Would you like me to tell you anything else about it? Yeah. Can you try to guess what that is? Sure. I can try to guess what it is. Would you like to give me a hint or should I just take a shot in the dark? Uh, take a shot in the dark thinking that it's something related to noise canceling. Okay, based on what you said, I'll guess that the round white object with loop printed on it is a noise canceling earplug. Am I right? Yes, that's right. How about this? What is this? Okay, I see. You are now holding a small white rectangular object with a silver metallic part. It looks like a USB drive. Is that right? Yes, that's right. How about this? It's a pretty easy one. Give me the word. Certainly. You're holding a small black action camera. Is there anything else I can help you with? How about this? What is this? You're now holding a white bowl that appears to be empty, except for a few small... Very good. Thank you very much. All right, folks. So as you can see, not only is fast and responsive, but it can do pretty pretty cool stuff. You can you know interact with it and potentially help you with. I haven't really explored all the cool things that one could do with the camera option, but uh, as these models are multimodal now uh, natively, I think that offers a bunch of options that uh, we'll be disclosing in the future. Maybe I want to do a video specializing on all the cool stuff you can do with multimodal models. Now, the share your screen option, folks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first open up Pixelmator Pro, which is the uh, software I use for creating YouTube thumbnails. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on uh, create new thumbnail, create new document, whatever. And I'm going to try to see if the model can help me make, you know, a simple thumbnail. So we're going to click over here. We're going to come over into YouTube video thumbnail. And um, we're going to click on, I don't know. Uh, let's see, we're going to, let's just go over to all templates and we're going to go to this default one and we're going to go over here. Perfect. And now 
let's pretend that I don't know anything about these things in the software here, which I don't really know all of them that well. And let's see if the model can help me out. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go on share your screen. I'm going to share the screen for my software. Hey, I'm trying to look. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm trying to learn how to use Pixelmator Pro. Can you tell me about what are these features here on my right? Like, for example, this little brush that I'm holding over with the mouse right now. Sure, you are asking about the features on the right side of the Pixelmator Pro interface, specifically the brush icon you are hovering over with the mouse. That brush icon is used to select and use the paint tool. It will allow you to use a brush to paint on your canvas. Is there anything else you would like to know? How about this one about, that has these three circles organized as a triangle? Okay, you are now asking about the icon with three circles organized as a triangle. That is the distribute objects tool. It allows you to evenly space out three or more selected objects in your canvas. No, sorry, sorry, no, that is incorrect. I'm holding over the color adjustments feature in Pixelmator Pro. Can you tell me a little bit about what color adjustments allow me to do? My apologies, I understand now. The icon you are hovering over is the color adjustments tool in Pixelmator Pro. This tool lets you modify the color of your image by adjusting various parameters such as hue, saturation, brightness, contrast, and more. Would you like me to go into more detail about any of those specific color adjustment options? Uh, now, I'm trying to uh, make a YouTube video thumbnail. Could you help me with how could I start using Pixelmator Pro? Like what should be the first thing that I do? Okay, you're making a YouTube thumbnail and want to know where to start in Pixelmator Pro. First, you'll want to add the image you'd like to use for the thumbnail. You can do that by either dragging and dropping an image file into the canvas area or by using the file menu and then place. Would you like help with that process? Uh, yeah, I clicked on file and I see like uh, new and then new from photos, open, open recent. What is the option I should use? Okay, you clicked on the file menu and see options like new, new from photos, open, and open recent. To add an existing image to your canvas, you should select the open option from the menu. Would you like me to elaborate on that process? Uh, no, that's fine. Sounds good. Is there anything else I can assist you with in Pixelmator Pro? All right. What can you tell me about the photo that I uploaded? Okay. You want me to tell you about the photo you uploaded. However, I don't see a photo uploaded on the canvas. It's still a white blank canvas. Did you need to upload a photo already? Or do you want help with that process? Can you look over it now and tell me what you see? Okay, I can look over the screen now. However, I still see a blank white canvas with no image added to it. Is there something else I should be seeing? Uh, yeah, let me see if I can change that so that you can see the proper, the proper image. So if I do this, uh huh. Okay, it looks like you've adjusted something, but I'm still seeing a completely black screen. It's possible there's a screen sharing issue or something else going on. Yes, there is a screen sharing issue. I'm going to try to fix that and try again. All right, folks. So as you can see, it's not perfect, but we're going to try again. I'm going to click on share your screen. I'm going to click on the uh, I'm going to click to go entire screen now, folks, and I'm going to go over to Pixelmator Pro. Hey, can you tell me what you see? Sure. I see that the user is in Pixelmator Pro. I can see a photo of a person with glasses and a hat sitting at a table using a laptop. There are also some editing tools on the right-hand side and a code snippet. Perfect, perfect. Sorry, I'm working on a YouTube thumbnail and I want to use this photo. What should be the first thing that I do? The video is about using AI tools to do different things. Okay, so you are creating a YouTube thumbnail with a photo in Pixelmator Pro for a video about using AI tools. A good first step for your thumbnail could be to crop the image and adjust the composition so it's focused on the main subject. 
Would you like suggestions about any specific part of the thumbnail creation process? Yeah. Uh, what do you think? I sh how do you think I should crop this image? Like, what should be the subject? The most prominent part of the image is the person using the laptop. So it would make sense to crop the image so that the person is the subject of the thumbnail and the surrounding elements are more in the background. You can do so by adjusting the cropping handles to focus on the user. Is there anything else I can help with? No, that's pretty good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Nah, it's fine. So folks, as you can see, it's not perfect because the model sometimes hallucinate things that are in the picture just to give an answer like you just saw with Pixelmator Pro and just inventing functionality. But when you give it information about what it is, it can be really helpful to na to help you navigate new software and you know work on code and things like that. So I still definitely recommend you play around with this, experiment with it and see what kind of stuff you can do. And um, to finish things off, I think the other thing that you can do with this um, uh, model is literally write text to it, right? So you can literally say, hey, can you tell me about things I could automate using LLMs like the recent release from Google of Gemini 2.0 experimental, sorry, not experimental, flash experimental. And the model is, there you go. Tasks like content creation, data analysis, or customer service using LLMs. Would you like to explore any of those areas in more detail? Uh, and that's it, folks. You can interact with it in the stream real time option. We interact with it and the answers are always in text. But if I go into create prompt, I can send that to the actual model and get just a text based response like I'm going to do now. And as you can see, super fast, given the cap capability and performance of the model. And if actually we can actually inspect a little bit about those capabilities by going to the actual original post, Google no Gemini 2.0 uh release post and there you go gemini 2.0 and it's a super powerful model that they're putting behind all sorts of interesting projects like uh the ones that i'm going to show you now like mariner uh, astra and others and you can check out their capabilities and the capabilities of the model by checking out this table here in the release post where they show the difference in performance for gemini 2.0 with comparison to previous gemini versions and another thing you can do is you can go to a website called artificialanalysis.ai and we can check out Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental to see how it stacks up against current providers like O1 Preview and uh, Lama 3.370 billion parameter model, which is amazing because it's like free. And as you can see, Gemini 2.0 Flash, it's like in third place right now compared to O1 Preview for quality, apparently, according to a this analysis, which I love this website for comparing stuff. And um, it's actually in third place for speed. So Lama 3.370 billion is now super duper fast. Um, and uh, price, I think Gemini 2.0, let's see, I don't know where it stands on price because the Gemini, yeah, it's an experimental, it's an experimental phase right now. But yeah, you can check out this website to see more interesting stuff about the capabilities and the analysis, like this index of quality, reasoning and knowledge, and so on and so forth. So I guess with that, folks, I'm going to stay here. Thanks for watching, folks. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time. Cheers.